This is a bomb ass camera and it shoots cinematic footage and I'm gonna show you today how to set up this bad boy for cinematic video. Let's go. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, straight from the beginning, I'm going to go to the Setups tab, number 5, under Settings Reset, and I'm going to completely wipe it and start from the beginning so I can show you exactly all of the settings that I use for video. So I'm going to go through the setup quite quickly. So you can see that the ZV-E10 comes with three modes. If you hit that, you see I'm going to s &Q. If you hit that, you go into Intelligent Photo, and then if you hit that, at the moment it is in Manual. If you want to change that, you hit the FN button right in the corner there. You're able to navigate to manual settings, which is where we want to be. We're going to page three, just auto focus. Just make sure it's always on continuous auto focus. Yeah, you're not going to change that. Focus area zone. I usually go wide. And then eye autofocus. Always make sure that the face eye priority autofocus is on. I don't mind if it's auto on right to left, it just means it's going to always track the eye. Uh, focus frame color always put it on red because when you do manual focusing you'll see that the focusing would then have a red ring over it or red color so it just makes it easier to see and then exposure compensation usually what i do is because i shoot in picture profile 10 which is hlg exposure compensation i usually keep it to plus 7 usually 1.7 1.3 between 1.3 and 1.7 that's for s-log highlights is usually the ideal uh, because you pre preserve them but sometimes in low light situations you'll find that if, if you focus for the highlights that the skin tones might come out bad i always try and focus on skin tones because you always want your subject to look good and obviously be properly exposed uh, flash i don't touch that color here what i usually do is i put it in daylight and that is just my personal preference because in a run and gun situation you know i always want like consistent uh, white balance but in an ideal ideal world you would want to have a gray card or a white card or a color checker and then custom white balance that usually what i do is i just keep it on daylight and just fix it in post you know it just makes things a lot easier for me but each to his own the the right way basically to do it is to set custom white balance and if you want to do that go in here you scroll right down for custom white balance you can set that idea so usually what would happen is say for instance if you have something white maybe like a like a piece of paper what then happens is you would then focus on there click in the middle see it's focusing on the white piece of paper and the lighting is kind of set so you know, click that it sets the white balance and then you can save it and that's custom white balance is set picture profile I go to picture profile 10 which is HLG you can see at the moment it's on HLG 3 I like HLG 3 because it just gives you a little bit more freedom so HLG profiles are high dynamic range profiles it's not like S log it's basically a hybrid log gamma so I like to keep it on HLG 3 and color mode is on BT.2020 under detail I usually keep level at minus 7 because the sharpening I usually add in post-production shooting assist usually product showcase you'll see I'll explain to you now with your quick menus you can toggle this on and off this is just when you are in a say like a, you know, a situation where you're doing a YouTube video but you want to showcase maybe like something like a product that you don't have to put the item in front of your face to keep focus you can actually put it beside you and it will focus on the product okay cool let's go to the next tab which is you can see that we are in shooting mode manual exposure usually what i can what i do is go to file format set it to the highest resolution which is 4k and i record in 24 frames per second so if you are a country that shoots in pal which is 25 frames per second and south africa is one of them i would recommend that you then shoot in the broadcast standards of your country because you're going to do any client work and you have to deliver it to them rather do it in the broadcast standards of your country because you're gonna run into issues with conversion stuff and then you won't be able to convert a 24 frames per second 
timeline to 25 frames per second because you're gonna have jumpy frames i shoot in 24 frames per second because it's a personal preference i honestly most of my stuff lives online and you know my audience is us based so i just stick to that but for client work i actually use 25 frames per second i actually recently used it on a client video and i shot everything at 25 frames per second audio record level um usually when you put it on 26 that's fine for the onboard if you have an external mic i usually put mine at about 10 11 12 maybe 13 sometimes i put it on 16 depending on where i am and which mic i'm using but if you're planning on using the onboard mic i would suggest just keeping it at 26 so let's set that right there audio level display on and then steady shot usually with the zv e10 active step, uh, steady shot is advisable but it depends on what kind of lens you have I have the, the 10 to 18 mil. This is an optical stabilized lens. Uh, so I usually keep it on standard for this one, but the advantage of putting it on active plus having uh, a zoom lens like this that's stable, plus the clear image zoom, which I'm gonna show you now, just allows you to zoom in a little bit more closer to a subject if you don't have any other lens like a telephoto lens uh, or portrait lens or anything that is close by and you wanna capture something that is a little bit further away you get a little bit of reach when you go all out to 18 clear image zoom and then cropping it in with active steady shot and then here by zoom this is what i was talking about clear image zoom you don't want optical zoom only you also don't want digital zoom clear image zoom just gives you extra little bit of reach when it comes to zooming in so at the moment uh, you can see if i put it on wide and a little bit in you see with the clear image zoom i get a bit of reach and this is what i was talking about the active steady shot see you just get a little bit of closer reach so display uh i kind of keep this also standard but the zebras so i set custom zebras especially if i'm using hlg i put mine at about 91 because i'm trying to expose for skin tone so usually when the zebras are on the face or on, on anyone's skin you would then obviously dial your exposure back so that the skin is properly exposed so the grid lines i keep it on rule of third grid line and that just gives me the the grid line so that i can obviously just frame everything properly that's just a old habit of mine so here is your custom keys right so you usually want to set your custom keys under video custom keys which is that uh, selection there the top one is for photo so you can also set that up as well but at this point in time everything on photo is exactly the same as i would use for video so i kind of just keep it that way to be honest with you as you can see under custom keys that everything is exactly as they are supposed to be so product showcase at the moment is by the trash can so you have a shortcut for that I generally don't change that either because I mean it's already laid out exactly the way I like it. So the function menu set is what I was speaking about, the quick menu that you uh, access. The top one is for photo, so if you're in photo mode that's what you're going to get. But here at the bottom is for, for video. So for me all the tabs as is, is all the tabs I use, so everything here as is, I kind of keep a standard. So the dial wheel I generally also don't change because the dial wheel here is set for aperture. And this dial wheel here is set for shutter speed. So I just generally keep them as is, to be honest with you. So if you go to the next tab, this is another pro tip. Because the camera, this particular camera doesn't last long, I would recommend that you switch on airplane mode because it's just a battery saving function. And then power setting options, I would advise you to put uh, auto power off temperature on high so that the device doesn't switch off. If you put it on standard after a while, you're going to see that the, the, the camera will switch off. So just putting it on high is just a, others would say it's a pro tip, I just think it's logical. I usually set the shutter speed on, on 50 because that's double my frame rate and usually my iso what i do is i set it on auto and uh it's a region between 125 
to a 6400 uh, ISO um, that's just for me a, a, a safe region I have shot at night up until 12 800 but that starts introducing some noise in your footage so I would really recommend you be careful on that you'd be able to actually see the noise on your screen so my display what I like to do is I like to keep the display a little bit cleaner um, so I make sure that my histogram is there and my volume is there those are the two mo main monitors that I obviously focus on and I have my you know other indicators here at the bottom to show me what ISO I'm on and my f-stop as well as my shutter speed and my exposure compensation um, so if my histogram more or less is in the middle like this it's obviously at the moment it's not properly exposed because of the light but I mean like you don't want the, the dark parts or the light parts the peak in the middle not to have any uh, you know lines as to say lack of a better word and then finally you can see if you press record you have a red light indicator around the screen that's just something that helps you know even though you have record right there that just gives you the indication that you know that you're on record mode so that's definitely a function that i love about the zve 10 and that is about it i honestly don't set anything else because the zve 10 has been created so simple and so easy to use and so user friendly that you know you don't have to heavily customize it and that is the zve 10